Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at stable and unstable nuclei which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to try to explain why some nuclei are stable and others are unstable. So if we're being successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the strong nuclear force and its role in keeping the nuclear stable, recognise that the strong nuclear force has a short range attraction and a very short range repulsion, and associate distances below 0.5 femtometers with repulsion and between 0.5 and 3.0 femtometers with attraction, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, stable and unstable nuclei. Now the list of instructions needed to build an exact replica, replica of a French colonial house or a vintage car is relatively short. It's about 10 to the 5 terms. But the list of instructions needed to characterise all the mutual interactions of the 50 nucleons in the average nucleus is about 10 to the 64 terms. So this makes it very difficult to understand the physics behind the formation and the stability of a nucleus. So how can we understand the makeup and characteristics of a nucleus? Well, physicists have been trying to, have been spending the past 100 years probing the nucleus trying to understand why it has its different properties. Now what do we know so far from GCSE physics? The atom is predominantly empty space, the radius of the atom is about 10 to the minus 12 meters, and the radius of the nucleus is about 10 to the minus 15 meters. So the radius of the atom is about 10,000 times bigger than the radius of the nucleus. So it would be impossible to truly draw the nucleus and the atom on scale in this screen because the nucleus would not be visible. Now the electron cloud repulsion and the proton-proton pulsion means that atoms have the appearance and the effect of being a solid when they're not. The repulsion means that the particles separate from each other and act like solid balls. But why does most of the matter in an atom exist as a nucleus? And why is this formation of matter stable in the nucleus? Now, if nature only had the gravitational and electromagnetic interactions, the ones we encounter in our daily lives, a nucleus with multiple protons would blow itself apart. This is because the, the electromagnetic interaction pushes the protons away from each other and that will be millions of millions of millions of times stronger than any gravitational interaction pulling them together. So this happens because electromagnetism is much stronger than gravity. Now, it's, this is still true even though the neutrons don't contribute to the electromagnetic force, only protons do. So some other force must provide an attraction even stronger than the electrical repulsion between the protons. Now this force is the strong nuclear force, even though it's only a, it's only a shadow of its true power, as most of its power is visible on the quark scale. So the strong force is the force between particles, so quarks, gluons and antiquarks inside a proton or a neutron. Okay, now, but the, the strong nuclear force found overall in a nucleus is a complicated residue of various cancelling effects. Now, there's no simple picture that describes all of the physics of a nucleus. Now, the strong force is a much more dominant force than the electromagnetic force found in the nucleus. So what this means is the strong force keeps the nucleus together. The nucleus can only be of a, cer a certain size because of the strong force. So the nucleus can only be a similar size as the range of the strong force. Now it's the attractive strong force which overcomes the repulsion of the protons. Without the strong force, the nucleus cannot be held together. Now the strong interaction can only act between quarks. This means only baryons and mesons are affected by the strong interaction. So leptons, like electrons, are not affected by the strong interaction. Now the strong force occurs with the exchange of gluons between particles particles or you could consider pions between quarks. Now this can only happen over a very short range. Now the short range of this the, the range of the strong force is about 10 to the 50 minus 15 meters. Now 10 to the minus 15 meters is known as a femtometer. Now this is because this is the distance the exchange particle travels before disappearing back into the universe. Now the gluon and the pion are the same exchange particles that just work on different scales. I mean in theory they should be called the same name but we'll just give it the name pion when it's between quarks and gluon when it's between particles. So the strong force has the following properties. It has a range of about 3 to 4 femtometers, 3 to 4 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And this range is about the same as the diameter of a, of a small radius of a nucleus. Now, that's not a coincidence. It's an attractive force from 3.4, 3 to 4 femtometers down to about 0.5 femtometers. Any separation smaller than this, it's repulsive to prevent neutral 
electrons and protons pushing into each other. And the strong force has these properties due to the properties of the strong force exchange particle, the strong force boson, the gluon or the pion. So as a result, we know that the, the nucleus has the following forces acting upon it. The strong attractive force and the electromagnetic repulsive force. But what makes a nucleus stable or unstable? Well, if we look at the composition of the smallest nuclei, we can, when we uh, we can observe what makes a nucleus stable or unstable. All nuclei, except for the, except for the most common isotope of hydrogen, which is only one proton, contains neutrons. Now, there are no nuclei with multiple protons that do not contain neutrons. So clearly, neutrons play an important role in helping stick the protons together. Now, also, there are no nuclei made from only neutrons and no protons because for most lightweight stable nuclei like those of oxygen and silicon they roughly have the same number of neutrons as protons in larger stable nuclei with larger masses okay like those of gold and radium and uranium have more neutrons than protons so this suggests two things number one neutrons are needed to make protons stick together and protons are needed to make neutrons stick together too if the number of protons and neutrons becomes very large then the electromagnetic repulsion pushing the protons apart has to be compensated by the addition of a few extra neutrons. Now this graph shows us the stable and unstable nuclei in the universe as a function of z the number of protons and the function of n the number of neutrons. Now in this diagram the black dots are stable nuclei, the red dots represent nuclei that exist for millions of years or more before they, un they decay and the light blue dots represent nuclei with lifetimes shorter than a second. So the stable and nearly stable nuclei form a band in this graph. Now it's thought that for stable nuclei the number of the number of protons equals the number of neutrons but for larger nuclei which are stable the number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons. So why does this seem to be the case and how does this link to the strong and electromagnetic forces? Now in the nucleus the electromagnetic force only acts between charged particles so protons. Now the strong force on the other hand acts between all nucleons because they're all made from quarks. Now if the electromagnetic and the strong forces are very closely balanced a nucleus will become unstable because this makes the nucleus susceptible to radioactive decay because if they're a similar size they're in effect almost cancelling each other out which allows the weak interaction to um, allow for decay to take place. Now if the strong interaction is much greater than the electromagnetic interaction then therefore Okay, that this means that the nucleus will be stable, the nucleus will not decay. But if electromagnetism was a lot greater than the strong interaction, the nucleus would not ever form because when the electromagnetic force is much larger than the strong force, a nucleus cannot possibly ever form. So this is why some nuclei form in the universe and some nuclei are unstable. Now it's important to note that to produce stability for smaller nuclei, the number of neutrons must equal the number of protons. That that's because the range of each force encompasses the entire nucleus on this scale, so here the increased strength of the strong force and the fact that all nucleons contribute to the strong force makes the strong force bigger than the electromagnetic interaction. However, for larger nuclei, to produce the same stability where the strong force okay, is equal is greater than the electromagnetic force, we've got to have more neutrons because if they were equal, the size of the strong force has decreased since the range of the strong force now in these larger nuclei is smaller than the range of the nucleus. So therefore to compensate for this because the strong interaction can't interact between all the nucleons in your nucleus you've got to add more neutrons in there because they will interact via the strong interaction but they will not interact via the electromagnetic interaction. So to produce stability for larger nuclei the number of neutrons must be greater than the number of protons because the range of the strong force does not cover the entire nucleus. So to compensate for for this more neutrons which provide only strong and a strong interaction not the electron interaction are needed to ensure the strong force is much larger than the electromagnetic force which is an important idea 
However, this can only be done for a certain amount of neutrons. Eventually, if the diameter of the nucleus is much larger than the strong force range, there will not be enough strong force produced across the nucleus to make it larger than the electromagnetic force. So this means that the size of the nucleus can only be approximately be the size of the strong force range, which is why the nucleus is so small compared to the atom. Now we can summarize this as the following. If the strong interaction is much greater than the electromagnetic interaction, the nucleus is stable. If the strong interaction is equal approximately to the electromagnetic interaction, the nucleus is unstable. And if the electromagnetic interaction is greater than the strong interaction, the nucleus does not ever form. Now for smaller nuclei to get a much greater strong force than electromagnetic force, the number of protons and neutrons must be equal. Now for larger nuclei to get a much greater strong force than electromagnetic force, the number of neutrons must be larger than protons to get the same effect as previous as the strong force per nucleon has decreased as they're further apart so the range of the strong force cannot encompass all of the nucleons. Now there's no true explanation why more neutrons in small nuclei don't actually occur. It could be due to energy level considerations. So, beyond a certain distance, the range of the force, the strong nuclear force falls away rapidly, much more rapidly than the electromagnetic force does. So this range turns out to be the size of a moderately large nucleus. So if you bring a proton and neutron together at a distance comparable to that range, they'll attract each other and form deuterium, a hydrogen isotope. But if you leave them at greater distances, they'll barely feel any attraction at all. So as a result, the strong nuclear force is much, much, much weaker than electromagnetism at distances significantly greater than the size of a typical nucleus. At, strong, at shorter distances comparable to a nucleus, it becomes a much stronger, an attractive force able to overcome the electrical repulsion between the protons. But the nucleus is not crushed to a point mass at very short distances because the strong force becomes repulsive and keeps the nucleons apart. Now, the Pauli exclusion force occurs between quarks of the same type as the nucleons when the nucleons are different, a proton and a neutron, for example, as they can't actually occupy the same space, making the strong force repulsive, which is why it turns repulsive. So, the strong force can change properties with nucleon separation which affects the composition of the nucleus. So the nucleus of an atom of size 10 to the minus 15 meters, as beyond that, the attractive strong force is much weaker than the repulsive electromagnetic force, so proton-proton repulsion cannot overcome. Now, the nucleus is not a point mass as at extremely small distances, but, uh, it has the strong force switches from attractive to repulsive, so the protons and neutrons remain separate. So the strong force is repulsive and the nucleon stays separate. So it's important to note that a distance is larger than far, 4 times 10 to the minus 15 femtometers, 15 meters, the strong force does not exist, which is why nuclei cannot be much larger than 5 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So there's not enough strong force to overcome the electromagnetic force. But between 1 to 4 femtometers, the strong force is strongly attractive. This makes the nucleons stick together and the stable nuclei form within diameters of this size. But smaller than 0.5 times 10 to the minus 15 or 0.5 femtometers, meters, the strong force becomes repulsive. This ensures the nucleons do not get crushed and exist as neutrons and protons. So it's important to think about the summary in this idea. Between 0 and 1.5 femtometers, the nucleus cannot form because the strong force is repulsive and this stops the nucleus being crushed. The nucleus does not form past 3.5 femtometers as the strong force is 0, so it stops the nucleus from being very large. But between um, 1.5 and 3 femtometers, the nucleus can form because the strong force is greater than the electromagnetic force, so the strong force is attractive. So if we can summarize what we've learned in today's lesson, we understand the strong nuclear force, its role in keeping the nucleus stable, the strong range attraction up to 3 femtometers, and the very short range of repulsion closer than approximately 0.5 femtometers. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can describe the strong nuclear force and its role in keeping the nucleus stable. We can recognize recognize that the strong nuclear force has a short range attraction and a very short range repulsion and associate distances between below 0.5 femtometers with repulsion and between 0.5 and 3 femtometers with attraction. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at stable and unstable nuclei in the particles and radiation topic for AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.